This video is all about renting in Vancouver. And why is it important? Because if there's two things that we know about Vancouver, one is that it rains a lot. And two is that the vacancy rate is incredibly low. And if you're trying to rent in the city, you know just how intense it can be. You need all the help you can get. And that's why I made this video to help you. I wanna give you all of the information in your hands so you can make the best decision possible. Everything you need to know from the A's to Z's of renting, from where to find them, how to secure them, how to rent with pets, tips on signing leases in Vancouver, and most importantly, how do you avoid getting scammed? It's all here for you. Stay tuned to the very end. Here we go. So let's start from the very beginning. What makes our system different? One thing that might surprise you about Vancouver is that nobody represents tenants in the landlord tenant relationship. There are property managers, but they represent the landlords. They will not represent you as the tenant. And that's something that's a big difference, especially from Ontario, where there's a lot of people moving from, uh, but some of the other provinces as well. So in those other places, Real estate agents represent the tenants in that landlord tenancy relationship, not in Vancouver, you're on your own. And that's part of what makes this so challenging and so difficult for so many of you that are moving here from somewhere else. As a tenant, you gotta go out and find a landlord that's willing to rent to you on your own and you gotta negotiate and do all that stuff that in other places is handled professionally. Now in BC, like myself, I'm a real estate agent that specializes in sales. So uh, if you're looking to move here and you wanna buy a place, I can help you professionally. You can reach out to me right there on the number on the screen and we can set up a conversation. But if you're looking to rent, I can't do that. My hands are tied. Legally, my license doesn't allow me to help you as a tenant. Now, generally there's two types of properties that you're gonna be able to rent if you're looking to rent in Vancouver. One is owned by individual owners and that could be a house, a part of a house, a suite in a house, basement suite, or a laneway house. It could also be a half duplex, a townhouse, or a condominium. These all tend to be self-managed where the landlord is managing that property themselves. And one of the things that you can really expect when you rent a property like that is there can be a lot of variation in how they're handled. Nobody's training individual landlords, so some of them have a better understanding of what the rules and regulations are than others. And that's one of the big distinctions that you're gonna have to understand if you're looking at that type of property. You, as the tenant, wanna be well aware of what the Landlord Tenancy Act allows the rights of the landlord and your rights as a tenant. And the second type of property is one where a corporation owns the entire thing. Now they could be houses, but that's not incredibly common in Vancouver. It's more common than it would be an apartment building of some kind, whether they're small or large, new or old. Um, most rental stock in Vancouver is actually pretty old. Apartment buildings that were built at the beginning of the 1900s, um, you know, 1910 to 1950, kind of in that range and they might be eight units, they might be a hundred units, somewhere in that vicinity. Quite often they will have shared laundry. It could be shared laundry on every floor or shared laundry in the basement. Not all of those buildings will have parking. Some of that parking might just be surface parking. What we've seen though in more recent years is that it's become easier and more profitable for corporations to build purpose-built rental buildings. So in the last five years or so, that has become much, much more common. And those obviously are much more modern uh, and they do have in-suite laundry and they will have parking uh, but they are also considerably more expensive but those are sort of the two options when it comes to corporately owned rentals and the big advantage i would say or the thing to be aware of is that 99.9% .9 of the time, there will be a professional property manager hired by the corporation to manage the building. And of course, those people are trained and licensed. And so they know very well what the rules are. The Landlord uh, Tenancy Act uh, in BC says the rights of the landlord are, what the rights of the tenant are. And so they follow those rules very closely. Um, so that is a big distinction sort of with the types of properties that are individually owned. It can be good, can be bad. And then generally when they're uh, run by property managers. It's just a much more level playing field. You might not like them, but they will follow the rules. All right, so now how do we find a rental in Vancouver? That's a really tricky question. Of course, we know that you're not gonna have professional help. There isn't a realtor who's gonna go out there and search for them as they would if you're looking to buy. And so you're kind of on your own. The best tool is the internet, of course, as with so many other things, when we wanna go buy something, we use the internet to do a little research, 
like watching this video and find a most suitable product. And so the two websites that you're gonna wanna get very, very familiar with, one is Craigslist um, and the other is Facebook Marketplace. Both those tools allow a potential tenant to search based on all sorts of different search criteria and they're incredibly powerful and they're being updated constantly. And basically everybody is putting their rentals on those two websites. There are other websites, but they're basically just all cross over one another. People are putting them on multiple places. But if you cover Craigslist and you cover Facebook Marketplace, those are the two sites that everybody is gonna be on. Um, and that is whether they are individual owners, investors, or property managers. They're all putting their listings on those websites because that's where the tenants you are gonna be looking. I think the, the advantage of Facebook Marketplace is that it's less anonymous. So there's an ability to follow up with people. You know, people have their, their names and faces are attached to the listings, unlike Craigslist. So I feel like there's a little less likelihood um, that you're gonna get taken advantage of or scammed if you're using a tool like Facebook Marketplace. Real quick, um, making these videos is pretty challenging and I love getting some feedback from people just like you. So please do feel free to comment down below. I'd love to get a thumbs up or a subscribe. Those That kind of feedback really gives me an idea if I'm on the right track, if I'm producing content that is valuable to people just like you. So um, if you feel like you'd like to give me some feedback, comment, click the like or subscribe and let's get back to the video. Taking this one step further is approaching property managers. Now, most people will just go to the internet and search there, but there are individuals who manage potentially hundreds of rentals, and those people are professional property managers. If you approach them, you have a good chance of them being willing to place you in one of the properties uh, that they're managing if they think that you're a good candidate, if you present well. We're gonna talk about how to do that in a little bit, but the thing is that these property managers will not go out and search all of the potential listings that are out there. They're only gonna put you in one of the properties that they actually manage because as I mentioned at the outset, nobody's representing you as the tenant uh, in this transaction. So if you go this route, what you wanna do is not just go to one property manager and think that the job is done. You wanna go to dozens of them and you wanna constantly be in contact with them to check if they have something that's coming up uh, because you would like to be renting from them. So that's a very efficient way to boost your search that a lot of people aren't doing. And the other thing to note about working with the property managers is that they're gonna be posting these on the websites anyways, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, uh, but it can speed up the process and get you uh, a leg up in the entire process. All right, so now we know what kind of properties are out there. We know where to find them, but how do we actually secure them? Uh, Vancouver is known to be incredibly competitive when it comes to rentals. They're very tough to come by. Um, and so you gotta do your best and you need all the help you can get. So here are my tips. Number one, what you need to do is you need to present well. You have to present as an ideal tenant in every single way possible. That's gonna be the way that you dress, the way that you communicate. You just wanna be pleasant and not come across as though you might be trouble. Obviously, a property manager or a potential landlord doesn't want trouble. They want somebody in the property that they own or manage that is, you know, not gonna ruffle feathers and not gonna burn the place down, ideally. <laughs> you wanna dress well, be polite, and be agreeable. And when you make an application, you want to prepare a letter of introduction. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Be open, be honest. Uh, be human and don't make it uh, entirely a form letter. Make it obvious that you're interested in that particular property and make sure that you re-edit because if you made it obvious that you, that was for a different property and then you forget to re-edit it, they're just gonna toss it most likely because they're gonna get so many potential applications. Another good tip would be to attach a photo of yourself, your kids if you're renting with kids and or a pet if you have a pet. And again, it humanizes you. It makes it harder to say no. And they might just like to see who they're renting to. It, it's gonna give you an advantage over the competition. And then have letters of employment and references available and ready to go. Don't make that something that you wait for the last minute and make sure that you're contacting your references and letting them know that they might get calls from potential landlords. In my past, I've had 
people call me for tenants that I've had as reference and I had no idea. And so I wasn't prepared. Uh, that really caught me off guard and it makes the old landlord potentially look bad and it kind of makes the potential tenant not look very prepared either. The next big tip to secure your next rental is just be persistent. You need to be like a hungry dog. It's, as, a, as we've said, incredibly, incredibly competitive and very, very tough. And if you just send one email out or make one phone call, it's easy for a potential landlord to ignore it or to forget about you when they're getting dozens, if not hundreds of applications. So pester them, pester them, just keep going and check on those websites multiple times a day. Uh, you don't wanna wait, like if, it's 5 p.m. that you're checking every day. If something was posted at 9 a.m., they've already got their inbox flooded. So you wanna be sure that you are on top of it. Think of it as a job, go after it, do your best and don't, don't give up. All right, so tip number three is just do not get discouraged. It's tough, I understand. It's hard to find a place in a rental market that has a 1% vacancy rate. Remember that the landlords have lots of options. And so you really need to do your best to present as well as you possibly can and push yourself ahead of the competition. Being persistent is really gonna help as well. Just being that squeaky wheel that they're gonna notice. And uh, if you present well and they notice you, then they're more likely to, to want to rent to you. So don't give up. You gotta play the numbers game, make application after application after application. Eventually one of them will say yes. And uh, so again, just don't give up. That's the real key to the whole thing. All right, so now renting with pets. Um, it is pretty tough. Um, individual landlords are, well, any landlord is no longer allowed to say that they won't rent to people with pets, but there's definitely many individual owners uh, and investors who believe that it's rough on their homes to be, to be renting to people with pets um, and maybe makes it more likely that um, multiple tenants in a home are gonna disagree or argue. Uh, so they typically try and avoid it. And that makes it pretty difficult. Now there's also, if you're renting in a strata, um, so renting most likely from an individual owner, those buildings can have pet restrictions and they could restrict that there's, for instance, no cats allowed or no specific breeds of dog. So that can make it really tough when you're, when you're looking for a rental. And as a result, um, the, the landlords that do rent to people with pets uh, will often ask for a bit of a premium, sort of they feel like they're taking a bit of a risk. They know that it's harder for you as somebody with a pet to find a place that will allow you to have a pet. Um, and they feel that there's probably also a little more wear and tear that happens on their property. So they often will ask a little bit of a premium. Um, and one more thing about pets is really don't try and sneak them. You're not gonna pull the wool over anybody's eyes. You wanna be upfront and it's best to be honest and it's best to really introduce them to the landlord. Many landlords may have a resistance to having a tenant with pets, but when they meet a cute little kitty or a puppy, a nice dog, they're, you know, they're gonna melt and they're gonna be happy to have them in their home or in their property. And why not just, uh, when you're being upfront, attach a cute pic of your pet, your dog, your iguana, your lizard, <laughs> whatever it happens to be. Another challenge for potential renters is if you're moving here from somewhere else. Unfortunately, landlords in Vancouver, 99.9% .9 of the time are gonna want you to meet you face to face. They're not gonna want to rent to you if you're still in Montreal or in Toronto. Um, and that means it's really hard to do from a distance. And really what I would suggest is you need to visit here um, and secure a rental weeks, if not a couple months ahead of time. So if it's within your budget, maybe make a week long, two week long stint in the city and run around, try and find a, a rental that's gonna suit you. Um, the main reason that landlords are not willing to rent to people who aren't actually here is they're mostly concerned about getting scammed. And so they really need to look you in the eyes and shake your hand uh, before they are willing to sign a lease with you. And aside from that possibility of coming to visit ahead of time, the other possibility is you have to be here on September 1st as, as an example, plan on being in a short-term accommodation, a furnished rental from say the 1st until October 1st. So you can rent places like that on Airbnb or VRBO. Give yourself some time to find a good solid rental, one that you're gonna be happy with and you're not gonna feel incredibly stressed. The thing to be aware is if you are renting short-term rental in Vancouver, that it's typically about 50% 
more than an unfurnished rental because there's more costs for those landlords to, to carry and there tends to be more turnover as well. If you're renting here in Vancouver, unfortunately, I can't help you professionally, but if you're thinking of buying in Vancouver, there I can definitely help you. I've been doing that for the last 15 years as a real estate agent in the city of Vancouver. Uh, and I've been helping people move here from all over Canada, all over the world, hundreds of families, literally hundreds of families. I can barely believe it either. Uh, but if you're thinking of moving here, be sure to reach out anytime and we can get that ball rolling, get that conversation started. Now let's get back to the video. Sorry, we're going to talk real briefly about some of the key points about signing a lease in Vancouver. Um, an important thing to know is that when you sign a lease, uh, you typically get asked to put down a half a month rent as deposit. And that's all that the landlord is allowed to ask. That's all that you have to provide. They can ask for a pet deposit. A half a month is all that can be asked as a pet deposit. And that would be paid at the same time as the, at the signing of the lease. Um, and leases tend to be six months to one year. Most commonly is signing a one year lease. And then frequently they will revert to a month to month lease. Important thing to know is when you have a fixed term lease, nobody can break it. And what happens pretty frequently in the Vancouver market is that if you're renting from an owner or an investor, an individual condo or a house or a suite, um, that those properties could get sold. The new owner can't ask you to leave if you have a signed lease. If you have a month to month tenancy at that point, they can ask you to leave. And at the moment, it requires a two months notice to ask you to leave. And unfortunately, because of the fluidity of our market, um, that does happen a fair amount. And it's one of the motivating factors I find um, in my line of work as a real estate agent that represents buyers and sellers in the system. Many people that used to rent kind of get tired of being pushed out of one rental after another, and then finally decide it'd be nice to own a place that they can control entirely themselves. And then the other thing to note, is that tenancies start on the first of the month and occasionally on the 15th of the month. So if you're planning your trip, you're planning when to arrive or you're getting ready to sign a lease, that is the typical date. Your rent is due at the beginning of the month most commonly. Now I promised some tips on how to avoid getting scammed. And unfortunately, it's a pretty big part of our system and it, it happens a lot to people who are trying to rent from long distances. So be aware of that. If you're looking to move here from other parts of Canada or other parts of the world, you are the prime target for scammers in our system. And what is the main identifying mark of a scammer? It's basically that it's too good to be true. Unfortunately, nobody's giving away anything for free or very cheaply in the city of Vancouver and especially not real estate. So if the going rate is $2,500 and you see a property that's being advertised for a quarter of that or half of that, you know, they're fishing for somebody to take advantage of. Now, the other thing that could be happening is that as an example, you could see a two bedroom listing uh, in the two bedroom section that is typically $3,500 and somebody's advertising it for $1,500. Make sure you read that uh, very, very closely because it could very well just be one bedroom out of the two bedroom that is being rented. Um, that's not a scam, but it's obviously not exactly what you're looking for if you are looking for full two bedrooms. The other thing to do is be here in person. Um, much harder to get scammed if it's not being done remotely and if you are actually here in person. Going into the property, checking it out, following up with the landlord. You have their name, you have their number, and you know where they live. And then finally, you really just got to trust your gut. And if you feel that something is off, then it probably is. And just move on to the next one. Nothing is too good of a deal that... Uh, you know, it's it's not worth getting scammed at the end of the day. So definitely, definitely trust your gut. It's one thing that I've learned in the odd occasion in my life where I've been taken advantage of, I should have trusted my gut. And, uh, and when I do that, I can avoid those situations as I'm sure, you know, you can too. And I make videos like this every single week. So be sure to come back next week and uh, we'll talk more about living in the city of Vancouver and moving to Vancouver. Now, if renting isn't for you and you're thinking about buying a place, this video right here is one that I just made about buying a condo in Vancouver. And then this one over here is my last video that I made that I think you're really gonna like. So check those out. Really appreciate you watching this entire video all the way to the end. Thank you so much for sticking with me.